No laughing, guys. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Alex. I'm an engineer, and my passion is with design, development, and prototype production of all sorts of engineering solutions. I made this video here because of recurring viewer questions about my 1.2 meter or 4 foot long precision straight edge here, which I made for the scraping job of my prototype press brake, or to be more precise, the spotting of the lower girder surface and spotting of the two upper girder surfaces for scraping it. A heads up right at the beginning. Sorry guys, I don't have any footage of me actually building this straight edge because when I built it I was pressed for time. However, in this video I'll walk you through the thought process of coming up with its design and share with you some experiences I had during this build. This straight edge is made almost exclusively with basic hand tools because I had no access to such a large surface grinder or even such a large milling machine in order to machine this in one setup for the necessary precision. It took me roughly two days to make the straight edge, however only one surface is scraped. Why both anyway? I think it is fair to say that this straight edge is made against common practice, because it's not made out of cast iron, but rather it is a welded design out of three pieces of carbon steel. So let's take a look. Now this implies two bottlenecks which must be solved. The first is that carbon steel is a very stubborn material to scrape. However, this can be overcome to a certain degree by using a dedicated scraping insert geometry, like this one. and a slightly altered scraping technique. I made a video about this particular matter, which you can find on my YouTube channel. The other bottleneck is that the welding must be done in a very careful and thoughtful manner, so as not to compromise the precision and long-term characteristic of the straight edge by welding induced residual stresses. But before I disgust you with a schoolish monologue, let's test the flatness of the straight edge. But please note that I made this edge roughly two years ago in a quick and dirty fashion to get my press brake done. I didn't use it ever since this one scraping job, just had it in store, sitting comfortably on this uh, foamy rubber cushion. Actually this material is for basement ins insulation, construction site stuff, but anyway, I digress. Okay guys, sorry about the strange view here, but I want to show you this test all in one go without a cut in between. And as you can see I have my straight edge on my surface plate and the straight edge is longer than my surface plate. And what I want you to note is that it is resting on two pins, one here and one here in order to give this measurement a defined base. Now let me sit you down and focus you on the indicator. And now let's see about the straightness of this straight edge here. But keep in mind that I cannot traverse the whole length of the straight edge. I'll try to go as far as I can without cantilevering the base of the indicator too much. So let's see. Now I'm beginning to cantilever again with the base and this is about as far as I can go.
And this is again as far as I can go. So I think based on this test, we may conclude that this straight edge is combined design and manufacture are reliable. Of course, two year storage are no real long term testing basis. However, two year storage are not negligible either. So first a few words about the design of the straight edge. Generally, what we want from a straight edge is rigidity, rigidity and more rigidity of the scraped surface. I'm sure you're familiar with the straight edges with the rounded back, the camelback type straight edges. A fine and long-term proven design, no question about that. This design on the other hand has two flanges with a fillet in between in order to gain more stiffness. These flanges here on this particular straight edge, they measure 30 by 15 millimeters. And yes, you've seen right, they are out of cold rolled material with all its potential for residual stress. Crazy, isn't it? But you saw the testing result from before. Still, it is surely better long term wise to instead use hot rolled material for the flanges. <laughs> but back in the day I was pressed for time. A large overall height generally impacts significantly on rigidity to the power of 3 that is. So twice the height, 8 times the bending stiffness. Overall height here is 200 millimeters. The fillet sheet here is 6 millimeter thick and laser cut. However, you can also make it by other means, flame cutting or conventional machining. <laughs> or even a clever angle grinder excursion if need be. <laughs> I wouldn't use a thinner fillet in this case in order not to compromise the flange's rocking rigidity, like so, too much. The fillet's holes are to reduce weight of the thing. Keep in mind that the straight edge does deform by its own weight, even if only by small amounts. Also, typically you have to handle such a straight edge by hand and this will eventually wear you out. It's just a question of repetitions. Also, you have to grab it somewhere for which the holes are nice. By the way, the holding points should be covered with leather or cloth when you do the spotting job in order to reduce heat transfer from the hand to the straight edge as much as possible. The holes, however, they should be arranged in a way that the fillet does not significantly lose shear stiffness, which is stiffness against this kind of deformation here. So in this case, I left these paths here in between the holes, which are roughly oriented 45 degree with respect to the straight edge. At least of same importance as design is the manufacturing technique. Before we were talking about the two bottlenecks in making such a straight edge. Being able to scrape carbon steel is the first. The second bottleneck is the welding strategy and the weld preparation. And believe it or not, uh, this making the straight edge here does not require a computer controlled 10 axis high vacuum laser welding center. Instead, all that's needed is a TIG welder, the right strategy, and a sensitive hand. The welding preparation must ensure that the flanges have a nice surface to sit on here on the fillet. Particularly, this means you must get rid of the bevel on the fillet from, for example, laser cutting. The flange should sit on the fillet faces as perpendicular as possible. But on this straight edge here, I didn't even machine the fillet faces, I just finished them with a file and a right angled guide block. Next we must weld on the flanges. You see, this straight edge is held together exclusively with tags. And this is the major part of the, <laughs> well, trade secret if you want. For this, these recesses here are placed with regular spacing because the recesses corners, like here and here, are very suitable for fusion tags. So basically the recesses serve two purposes. Firstly, they ensure a defined tag spacing and secondly, they allow for small, well-defined and strong tags at corners. At these points here, 
this one, this one, and the next one, where the 45 degree paths end. Shear stresses are transferred in the flanges. And here I use tacks at each corner, here two and two on the back side, to also give the flange some rocking stiffness against deformation like so. In between the 45 degree paths I tacked in two places, here and here in the fillet center. Generally the tacking sequence I used here is from the center towards the ends, kind of like uh, placing a sticker on a painted surface and pushing out the air bubbles. And I alternated top and bottom flange tacking, that is tacking two spots here, then two spots here, and so on. Well, and finally we have to scrape the straight edge of course to give it its precision. In this video I don't show the actual scraping work, however you can find hints on this matter with carbon steel in my already mentioned video. But I want to discuss briefly a few things about spotting such a straight edge. Typically this would be done on a surface plate like here in this setup. But you do not absolutely need a surface plate. Instead you could also tackle the spotting issue by making three identical straight edges and spot them with each other in a smart alternating manner. The theory on this is called the three plate method, in case you want to look it up. Such a job could be done by a tenacious guy even in the field with minimal equipment. <laughs> Whatever kind of scenario this would require, I don't know, but still. <laughs> it's a little tricky to scrape a straight edge like this one, which is comparatively narrow in relation to the height. Because there is a big danger of uh, the straight edge starting to lean more and more to one side as you go from scraping cycle to scraping cycle. And in order to avoid this, what I do is I use my right angle master block here and use it as a backrest during spotting and then I rub the straight edge against the surface plate like so. And this should ensure that you do not drift toward one side or the other side from scraping cycle to scraping cycle. And finally a side note on this particular straight edge here. You see I cannot completely spot this one on my surface plate, not even diagonally. Generally this is a problem. But if the overhang here is not too large, you can still succeed with scraping such a straight edge flat if you interpret the spotting pattern right. You see, due to the overhang, the spotting pattern will get more dense in this area of the straight edge than it is here, even for a perfectly flat straight edge. So what you have to do during scraping is not to follow that temptation to t scrape away more material here than here. Generally what's good practice if you have overhang is to flip the straight edge around on the surface plate after each scraping and spotting cycle so as to compensate for the error one makes by misinterpreting the spotting pattern. But now enough about these details because you may not be suffering from overhang at all. Alright guys, I hope these little secrets of the trade are helpful for you in some kind of way. As always, thank you very much for your interest in this video. I appreciate your time. All the best for your scraping projects and thank you.